Rick, so this is the, what, the third document? Third document. In the roadmap uh, coalition. Can you talk a little bit like why the coalition then decides to put out this one, uh, a new one now, uh, the, the most recent policy brief, and a little bit about the history uh, of the coalition and the, the achievements that have been made since the first one, which is 2009. Yeah, 2009. Think, right? And since you guys call it a, a roadmap, I mean, are we getting to where we're supposed to be getting? Or to the, are we following, following the map? Where's the well, detours? Where's the, where are we? <laughs> where are we, where are we Where are we on, online? First, uh, thank you to the Roadmap Coalition. It's an honor to represent the coalition here today. And thank you for IFPRI and Roger uh, for moderating. Um, the roadmap, the history, a group of us came together 2008, 2009 um, and posed a challenge, a question. And that question was, if you really want to solve global hunger, what would you need to do? And let's leave our organization has at the door. Let's be aspirational. And it was uh, initially uh, six groups. It was us, Mercy Corps, um, Jen, who was at the children, David Kalk, who was at CARE, uh, Catholic Relief Services, um, Bread for the World. A group of us came together and we basically locked ourselves in a room for about six months and decided that we would either kill each other or come up with something <laughs> good. We're all still here and we're all still friends, even though people have changed jobs, um, uh, which is a positive thing. Everyone is doing great things. One of the things that we came to very quickly was the realization that there are multiple faces of hunger. And if you truly want to solve the issue of global hunger, you needed a comprehensive strategy that would address these multiple faces of hunger. And after weeks and months of dialogue and debate, um, we came together and identified pillars that would form the base of a comprehensive approach to hunger. And those four pillars included uh, agriculture development efforts to help increase the productivity and access to markets of the four to 500 million small scale farmers, mostly women, not growing enough to feed themselves and their family. Uh, we focused on second nutrition <laughs> efforts, especially focusing on vulnerable populations, uh, especially those in the first thousand days, pregnant women, children up to age two, to ensure that they were getting the appropriate nutrition, nutrients, and calories uh, to allow for proper growth. Third category was safety net programs uh, to help mitigate the impact of societal shocks in a country to help ensure that those who are in extreme poverty, suffering from chronic hunger, have the capacity to at least meet the basic needs so they could evolve out of chronic hunger and extreme poverty. And finally, the fourth category was emergency response. Uh, to help address the immediate needs of those suffering from either conflict or natural disaster to help meet those immediate needs. Um, this formed the basis of, um, thanks, I guess I will start singing now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to the chagrin of the group here. Um, in addition to identifying these four elements, pillars of a comprehensive approach, talked about the need for ensuring that all of the relevant government entities were coordinated, were part of the response, uh, and that, in fact, there was a plan uh, among all of these relevant agencies. Um, so that, in a nutshell, was the initial creation of the roadmap. So the question, was the roadmap worthwhile? Are we following this roadmap? What is the success that's been achieved? And I think in a very positive way, I can say that a lot of the goals of the roadmap, in fact, have been achieved. We're not near the end of the rainbow, not near the pot of gold. A lot has been achieved. But I think it's important also to note that it's not just because of the roadmap. There are a lot of efforts underway. When we initially started out uh, on the roadmap, there were not as many groups involved as there are today, number one. And two, the U.S. government response to global hunger at that time was primarily emergency mm -hmm. response. Yes, there was some school feeding. Yes, there were some development efforts, but primarily it was emergency response. So where are we today? And once again, just to, to pay tribute to the fact that the president in his inaugural address talked about agriculture, we had a tenacious uh, administrator at AID who was very committed. Secretary Clinton, very committed around nutrition. Dick Luger, Bob Kate. We had, so there was a lot of organizations, the Gates Foundation. So where are we? 
uh, the whole area of agriculture, which really had not been on the map since the Boer log days, uh, major commitment via Feed the Future on agriculture, including in a bipartisan way, a billion dollars annually appropriated by Congress. In the area of nutrition, we have now a all of government nutrition plan and strategy, even though a lot else needs to be done. The scaling up nutrition effort was launched uh, four years or so ago. 50 countries have signed up, which around very specific identifiable indicators uh, and interventions. Uh, we know exactly what to do to prevent stunting. In the emergency response area, uh, much greater effectiveness and uh, more flexibility. AID through very creative work at the Food for Peace office, now more pre-positioning, capacity to redirect ships and tap resources uh, in countries uh, close to uh, where uh, conditions might require assistance. There is now a mix of cash and commodities. There wasn't when we all started. About 40% of the response now is cash, 60% commodities. Um, the other thing I'll mention, then, then stop, is Congress. I mean, we, I know we're here in Washington, we follow a lot of the debate and dialogue, and we see a lot of dissension among the parties. This is an area that is completely bipartisan. And the appropriation levels over the last five, six years have gone from about two to four billion dollars. And it is completely bipartisan. It's not conservative or liberal. It's everyone, by and large, have been on board. It's something I think, as Americans, we can be proud of. This is and always has been, whatever administrations in the White House, whatever parties in charge in Congress, there has been support, and that support has deepened. So I'll stop there. Great. And then, and then with this report, any new uh, impulses, uh, new recommendations? What should the policy be makers, makers and in your colleagues uh, in all the, the, the organizations uh, well, be paying I'll, attention to? Two or three uh, specific ones I'll mention. One is we all agree that there should be legislation to institutionalize a comprehensive approach. Um, if we just look at one piece or another, and it's, it won't help us solve the problem. So point one was there should be legislation to institutionalize a comprehensive approach that one, identifies all of the pieces of a comprehensive approach, two, calls on the administration to develop a plan, uh, and three, uh, to ensure that there is coordination among all the relevant government agencies. The second recommendation related to the first is whatever happens with regard to legislation, the U.S. government should have a comprehensive food security strategy that incorporates these four pillars that does, in fact, include all of the government agencies, a whole government approach. And the third that I'll mention that we're talking about that IFPRI does a lot of work on, and that is there should be more and more assistance to help countries develop their own capacity to put in place comprehensive food security strategies in country and in many respects can be the exit strategy over many years for the international community when countries have their own strategies and the capacity to implement those strategies. And, and was this the, the, the coordination, the comprehensive nature, was that also kind of mentioned in the earlier reports or you felt that was needed particularly in the, to, to, to come out again in, in, in the third well, roadmap. we've always talked about comprehensiveness, talked about coordination, talked about the importance of a plan. Great progress has been made, but there's still a lot that can be done. So I think about coordination, um, planning, there has been success, but we can do better.